Welcome back to Conversations with Creatives. I'm your host, Sam. I'm Andrew. I'm Marissa. I I have a hard time actually like being like, I'm Andrew. I and know. I, now I should. <laughs> I'm Sam. <laughs> I'm Andrew. And like, I'm talking to the camera and not to the microphone. I know. It's kind of like... It's awkward. Yeah. Cause it, well, I mean, because it helps with the guest when I'm like this, but yeah. I'm like just talking to this. Like, I need to be like, I'm talking to Sam over here. <laughs> Sam the twin. Sam the twin. Right. Yeah, these guys didn't know I was a twin. I did. I Andrew was... Knew flabbergasted today when I found out. I was like, there's no way. I was stalking through Instagram trying to find out who this twin was. <laughs> well, it's interesting, I guess, because it's like... Anna Fenkel. Anna Fenkel. Because, mm -hmm. like, having a twin isn't, like, weird, but it is weird. Anyway, yeah. our guest today... Is a twin. Is, is a, twin. a twin. Emma McMillan. Photography major. She was really cool. Yeah, she's very open. Very, very open. open. This is kind of our, our deepest episode of the pod yet. Mm-hmm. It helps to have someone, I think, that we know because we're just very comfortable off the bat. Yeah. And it just helped more for this season. I feel like we have had more time to like sit down like and talk to the person first so we can kind of get, get a base understanding. And then we jump in and then we do the interview. I feel like that's definitely like flowed a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this sounds really weird. I think the cameras make it more comfortable. Interesting. I like it, it feels more comfortable in here than it did last season because it was like, I don't know, it was a weird setup. But now yeah. it's like. It's definitely. It's good vibes. Live. It's good mm -hmm. vibes. Yeah. So enjoy the episode. Great episode. See you guys. See you later. All right, we're back with conversations with creatives. Today we're joined by Emma McMillan. So glad to be here, guys. Photography major at Mason Gross. And a friend. And so, a friend. Yes. Professional friend, strictly. A colleague. A <laughs> colleague. We do know each other. Sometimes it's sometimes it's a little kind of scary because you like you meet this person and then five minutes later you're like, tell us your life story. But tell we us your know. greatest fear yeah. and your biggest regret. What's your greatest fear? Heights. Oh. Failure, probably oh. failure. Oh. I lied. Failure's a big one. Failure, aren't we all? Now, are you scared of falling or heights? Because <laughs> there's I don't a difference. Know. Like like going up on roller coasters is is fine, but well, once it, you're up top, once I'm up top, it's like, once you go down, it's fine. I mm. guess it's the letting go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just shocked uh, myself yeah, with that answer. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this is our deepest episode yet. Oh my god. All right. So, so let's start off. We usually ask our guests. Sorry. Do you consider yourself someone who is a creative person? Uh, yes, I think I suppress my creativity for a long time. Interesting. Uh, when I was more scholarly, I guess. But is this scholarly as well? Probably. Mm. Um, but I think, uh, first and foremost, I am a creative and a storyteller, if that makes any sense. Um, that's that's just, yeah. So you take photos as yes. a photography major? Yes. Well, also, I'm curious, why would you suppress your creativity through, um, through academics and like and like how did you come to terms with that and find that out yeah so I don't know I was very academic my whole life I took a lot of art classes and I was gonna go pre-med um, really yeah yeah I was gonna go pre-med and play soccer at Vassar that was the plan wow that was what I planned out uh, I was like this is gonna be so impressive to everyone I was like this is gonna be great but I was also like I'm gonna hate my life. Uh -huh. and a doctor. I really, yeah. yeah. Could you imagine me as a doctor? Dr. McMillan. No. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so, and as college loomed near, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna hate my life. And I loved all my photo classes. And I think um, I kind of just let go a little bit. And I was like, I wanna be happy. And yeah. so I applied to a bunch of art schools. I ended up here. And I'm really happy to be a creative now, first and foremost. <laughs> well, yeah, because. Well, because that was definitely a thing for me is I was like trying to figure out what do I do after college? And it was kind of only film. Like I was like, I could do like marketing and I'd probably be like, Ooh. and I'd probably be like pretty good at that. But yeah. do I really want to spend my time doing marketing? That wouldn't be like that fun. And film is so interesting. And so, and that was always my dream. So why would I not go for the dream? Exactly. I do have a minor in marketing. But like. <laughs> Sort of just, just to clarify. DCIM. Yeah, so I also don't have marketing. that much faith in myself, which I think you should maybe humble yourself a little bit as a creative. Like, <laughs> like, like maybe maybe if you do fail, you can like get a 401k. Yeah. Yeah. What's your post-grad plans? And you're like, get an Oscar. Obviously, that's going to happen. I'm going to graduate. That's and in then the five-year plan. I was just texting Sam about this. 
I had the vision, and it was us, t- ten years, and we're going up to the Oscar stage, and we got our trophy, and we're like, and we're like, we did it. We did <laughs> Manifestation's it. a powerful tool, Andrew. Do you have a dream like that? Do you have your goal set? I know it's a big question. People keep asking. It is. Me. I mean, as of now, I think I'm going to go into museum studies and be an art curator. Oh. But I also, yeah, cool, right? But yeah. I also really love writing a lot, yeah. and I really love screenwriting and writing short stories. So. I don't want to leave that behind, but I'm excited about art and curation and want to make it like more accessible to people. So I don't know how I will do that, but I don't know. I still have a lot of like yeah. random passions here and there. So it's hard to like determine exactly what I want to do and be happy, but I'll figure it out, I guess. That definitely seems achievable. So what was it about photography and taking pictures that appealed to you? I think like, I don't know. I got a camera when I was little and I was always taking photos. And then I think, I mean, this is a little oversharing, but like OCD, I don't know. Like I always take photos of everything, Mm, like everywhere I go. Cause I'm like, oh, like what if, what if I want to see that again? Mm -hmm. I have, I have like over 50,000 photos in my camera roll. Like my parents have to pay for more storage on Apple. I just had to text my mom the other day. I was like, I'm out. Like I'm at 35,000 right now. It's insane. (laughs) I have videos on there. I have all my photos. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, what if I need it later? (laughs) I'm like a hoarder of photos. Yeah. So I think that just you get to capture a moment and it like stays there. And I feel like that's more accurate and like more preservative than anything. I, I don't know. Like that's just how I feel. A photo. A photo. I mean, it's different than a painting because a painting is. is sort of an interpretation of a moment or a place. But a picture is that moment in time. And it can last a thousand words. Yeah. <laughs> A picture says a thousand words. Yep. <laughs> what does a video say then? Two what million. does a film say? Two million? Two million words. Is that like the ratio? Like, is that? Well, yeah. there's how many pictures is in one second of film? 24. 24, 24, 24 pictures 24 in one frames second. Frames per second. Frames per second. I learned something in film school. Math. I have to take a math course this semester. We did one already, too. Nah. I'm really sorry. It's like finance class oh, yeah no we had a finance class like who's making me take that and like it's interesting because like because because like their thought with that is you should learn how to make money as an artist because you're not going to make a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> so you should learn Here's how to like expectations. how to do some stuff so you're not completely thrown out which yeah. i get and that's that actually is helpful i think because i learned how to like kind of do my taxes and i had the notes now so if i ever i don't need even to, know how i don't have a credit card yet like should i get on that I don't I have anything. We should get credit cards, I think. Should I invest artists, in mutual bonds? you should bonds? get credit. Remember that, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Buy credit. Have you ever thought about film, then? Because I know, like, photography, because, like, what is the thought process? Because I've done some photography, obviously, and it's, it feels like, it feels so separate to me as an art form. Yeah. And also, obviously, people are like, oh, we're cameras. I mean, yeah, it's cameras. the same thing. Cameras, you take photo. I don't mm-hmm. think it's the same thing it's at so all. so different. It, um... I don't know. I was always making like those little iMovie films, like when I was like a kid or whatever. Yeah. And then um, I was gonna transfer to the film school actually, sophomore year. Really? Yes. What? So I was. after the COVID year. After the COVID year, I was gonna transfer to the film school um, because I didn't really like the photo classes I was taking. Yeah. Thankfully, I met an amazing professor last year, Adam Putnam, and he's incredible. And he's written like all my letters of rec and everything. And I'm really back into it now. But I was like really missing the cinematic, like I don't know, like vibe to my classes and everything. Mm. I was like kind of discouraged. And so I was going to transfer and then ultimately decide not to evidently. But I did take a media class and that's where I met Sam. Yes. Well, first through Bianca, of course. Queen yeah, Bianca. Caproni. Yes. Uh, and I met Sam in our media class and I got really back into filming and doing short film stuff and telling narrative through something longer than a photograph. So I really miss that. Um, I'm continuing to do that in some of my media courses, but semester... I'm not, sadly, but um, I would love to be, like, a creative director on film or something like that, uh, working with the aesthetics of film, yeah. um, which you is something we've we've spoken about. Yes. Love to do that. Um, but, yeah, I think it's very separate. You were saying, like, it's the camera just feels different, I think, when yeah. I'm recording versus when I'm taking photographs, especially if I'm shooting film or something like that. I think... The feeling is very different. Uh, I'm in like a different space, like headspace when I'm doing yeah. either or. I feel like everything, especially when you're shooting film, real film, mm. physical film, you have to be more intentional with your choices. That's mm. what I was just talking yeah. about this yesterday with my professor. I've been, I, I only shot film the whole summer. Mm-hmm. That's all I did. Really? I challenged myself. I was like, I'm not going to shoot digital. 
it gets a little too easy almost. I feel right. like I overdo it and then I end up hating all the photos I take. And like, sure, they're probably fine. Like they're physically fine. But to me, as I'm like developing as an artist, I'm starting to like notice I'm getting in a rut of like taking the same things. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was really kind of in a creative burnout. Um, and I wasn't really going anywhere. So I was like, I'm just going to shoot film. And every frame, like when you hold it up, every frame is so intentional. I'll hold it up. I'm like, no, I hate that. So I move on. Yeah. And I don't have that. So I have these rolls of film where every single photo, like I remember taking it so vividly. And they're all like exciting to me yeah, for once great. rather than going through shot after shot like of, like, a, of, of a headshot thing. I took of someone. I'm like, oh, it gets boring. Minor adjustments. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then, and then when you shoot a photo, do you... Do you like have a narrative in your head each time? So or, like, how does that work? Yeah, of, like, I didn't get to talk. Yeah, I didn't talk about like my focus. My focus yeah. is conceptual portraiture, okay. um, which sounds super fancy. Can you, uh, can you explain yeah, what that means? I'll elaborate. Uh, so uh, conce picture jar. conceptual Square. portrait. <laughs> it's a concept. <laughs> it's a concept. That's for, it, I mean, yeah, it starts from a concept. Yeah. So I also double major in English, as you guys know, and I love reading. I love short stories. I love writing. Um, so I usually like to take either something from myth, something from short story, historical happenings, political happenings, and turn that into a narrative that I see in my head. So I feel like we read all these stories and sometimes they're translated into film. Sometimes they're translated into like just uh, more books, more words. And I wanted to start doing something that let me like kind of release what I'm seeing when I'm reading because I'm a very like visual person, obviously mm -hmm. like a visual learner. And so I took stories like The Yellow Wallpaper, um, King Midas's touch, which is a myth. And I translated that into from like a concept in my head into portraiture of different people as these models in my head of what these characters would look like, act like, and what the the vibe would be of that story. So that's kind of what it, I've been focusing on. Right. Um, and going into this semester, I want to do some work in like recreating Renaissance portraiture and Renaissance stories. Oh, really? So that's kind of what I'm working toward. We'll see. But I'm trying to take this year because it's not thesis year, obviously, which thank God. Um, so I'm just taking this year to do whatever I want. Um, yeah. And that's why I was shooting street photography in like New York. I was taking photos of my grandparents' house over the summer doing that. Like just trying to find as many stories as possible instead of, um, I think I'm trying to tell my, this sounds so deep. Oh my no, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Mm. Um, I'm trying to tell my story more so than other people's stories now. I hmm. agree. So. I think I know for me, we're juniors now. Juniors, yeah. So, it sounds weird to say out loud. I know. Yeah. But to find your voice, your story, we had um, a filmmaker come to our screening last last year, and she basically looked at a theater full of film majors and was like, you all have something to say. You all mm -hmm. have different perspectives and backgrounds and histories, and you all have stories that you can tell from those backgrounds and everything and i found that very maybe i knew that subconsciously but to hear someone actually point yeah. at you and look you in the eye and say you have you have something to say you have some worth it's inspiring but scary it I is think. and from that you know you do some self-reflection and a lot I, th I think a lot of the things that you d would describe as style or your your tone in your work has always been there and you kind of have to go back and kind of find when it started. So, like, for yeah. me, it is family stories, mm -hmm. yeah. family portraits, stuff that I was just sort of gravitated towards and didn't yeah. really think about it. I remember your little, like, one shot of, I think it was your grandmother cooking the egg. Right. And mm -hmm. I hadn't seen any of Sam's work. And I was, like, I was just blown away. It was just so simple and so intentional. And I, I loved it. I did. Yeah. And I think finding that common thread from your work, like, Obviously, we're maturing. We're telling new stories. From, like, even from my work in high school to now, I can find a common thread. Exactly. And it's just about making sense of it, I think. So I'm trying to do that this year. I think that's that's the goal. Yeah, kind of, like, contextualizing everything. Yeah. Into something that you can be confident in and actually stand on. Exactly. And say, this is my... This is the Macmillan style of taking photography, you know, taking <laughs> Which pictures. I think other people see, but again, like, I don't think I see it all the right. time. Like, I think we were talking in media class and you were like, oh, this like, this is your vibe. Like, I feel like mm. this is a shoot you do and stuff. And I was like, I guess, yeah. I was like, I yeah. didn't see that before. <laughs> I didn't like notice it, but because it just feels so jumbled in your head until you start talking to other people, which yeah. I think is crits are most important, like critiques and stuff like that. I feel like 
people get scared of that, but I feel like I thrive on that. I love being criticized. I really do. Because yeah. so, you don't get better. If you're just, oh, you're yeah. so great. No, I'm not. Yeah. I need to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Stay on track with Rutgers Winter Session. Choose from over 100 course offerings in both hybrid and online formats. Winter Session students are also invited to participate in our fun, free activities. Registration begins today. Visit, Visit our, our website, website to learn more at, at winter.rutgers.edu. Well, well, this is something, something that's been on my mind, I guess. But I feel like I'm not, I'm not like as in tune with like with the stories I want to tell that come from my personal life. Mm. But I feel like I, I can have a script and an idea that's very not with me, and that's my story. And I'm sorry again, and I'm going to tell it. But like Sam, like all of his stories, they come from his heart. And from his family, and they're so personal to him. His families are like, and like, and like the family affair to an extent with you. But me, I've always had a hard time having those ideas and putting them onto film. Um, I have an idea kind of with like my dad and our bond and our shared love of comedy and film, but I've never been able to figure out what that movie is. Mm. And so I'm curious. Do you have those concepts that you want to do, but sometimes as an artist, you just can't get I there? How to say it? Yeah, I think the it's long like, went away. We'll yeah, yeah, no, no. I think both. It's like vulnerability, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think both telling your own story and telling a story that you've written and you hold like really close to you, because I've seen your work as well. Like you have great writing, great concepts. I think that's vulnerable as well. Mm. I do, but I think kind of just displaying something very personal, like family. Um, it's a lot because you feel like you won't get it right, so you never start. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I want to do something with my twin sister, I think, and I've never started. Yeah. Because it's like, a, yeah, exactly. Like, twin, it's, yeah. it's like a weird thing to talk about. A lot of people don't get it. I wanted to do something with that, like with comparison and stuff. Like, we were compared our whole life. I never did it. Like, and I still yeah. haven't. And I have that written in my notes literally since high school. I was like, shoot with Livy. I know. I, yeah. I feel and the I've same never way. done it. It's one of those things where it's almost. The most affecting thing in my yeah. life is that bond yeah. with that one other person. It's not a sibling bond. It's something completely different, and you can't describe it. Yeah. And I'd love to do that through my photography and writing, but I can't quite do it. And yeah. I, so I never start. Yeah. And um, talking about, like, mental illness is also something I've tried to shoot before. I've gotten, like, a few shoots in where I'm like, that kind of it kind of displays how I'm feeling. But again, it's like, it's very vulnerable. I talk about it a lot and I feel like very open about it and my struggles, but creatively, it's hard to put it into a visual representation. It's like an indescribable thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And usually the indescribable can be described through my art and I just haven't, I haven't quite gotten there yet. So maybe it's something you're just always chasing and you might not get there and that's the journey, I don't yeah. know. But um, I think those topics, just starting them is like, you just need to do it. And if it's crap, it's crap. Yeah. But I think starting is like the hardest part, obviously. Yeah. And also, like this is kind of interesting too. I was thinking about is I feel like is I feel like I'm a very I'm overall like I'm an open person. Oh yeah. I'd like I so. talk a lot about everything, and so I know do you. About you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and ask him, he'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. But also, I can't put that into my film somewhat. And I yes. think with Sam, Sam's been more reserved since I've known him, and I'll just get little like bits here or there. And then Sam is the most open person, but it's through his work mm-hmm. and it's through his films. And that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Hacking that through your art. I never thought about that. That's like, yeah, because I think we're both like very open and not that you're not open. I, I We talk, yeah. you know, <laughs> but yeah, like when I see like your shorts and stuff like that, that egg video, I still have it in my head. Yeah. I still remember <laughs> it. I still remember it so vividly. And I'm like. God, Sam's so deep. Oh my God. <laughs> like, I feel like I learn way more about you, like in your yeah. films. And I think as like open people, sometimes it's weird because I, I don't think people like take me seriously, I guess. Oh, I see. Because like, I'm like, I don't know, like, I'm like all over the place. I don't know quite how to describe myself. I'm just like very <laughs> open and stuff. And I, I like talking to everyone and I, I joke about things a lot. So yeah. I think if I try to do something serious like that, like maybe they won't take me seriously. I'm not quite sure what the fear yeah. is, but it's definitely, I think a personality thing is definitely. I think that's yeah. definitely valid. But the one I had, um, my mom was like, can you take some photos of your grandparents' house? It was mm-hmm. their house of 50 years. My mom grew up there. 
There was a tree in the back that's been growing there since they moved there. Wow. And I grew up there. We had Sunday dinners there. Sure. All my cousins were there. We're like a really close family. And my grandmother has Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. And I'm just starting to forget who she was. I and know. I think yeah. it all, all of us just gathered there on their last day there at the home. And my mom was like, you can take photos. And I was, sometimes when people ask me to take photos, it feels like a chore. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. I was like, I'll bring my film camera. I was yeah, like, yeah. I'll shoot. And I got some really beautiful photos of us just kind of having a communal breakdown. Yeah. Um, it was like our last Sunday dinner kind of together. And I was walking around, shooting stuff, finding stuff in the house that I hadn't seen before. Um, and it was just like, I like was bawling my eyes out. Oh, yeah. But I got some really beautiful photos that I know I'm going to hold on to forever. And like, Obviously, sharing them is great, but I would be fine with just not sharing them. Yeah. I just felt really good about the photos. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, your family has that too. Exactly. I think yeah. As us, as you know, I mean, photo and film, I think there are some similarities. Yeah. In terms oh, of, you know, I know we're talking about the differences, yeah. but the idea of capturing yeah, so yeah. and holding on to something. I think, especially with family, mm -hmm. you almost have a duty to, to capture, archive it. Archive. Yeah. That's a good word. I feel like I have an archive of all these photos now. And it's like sad because I'm like, oh, I'm going to cherish these when this happens. When exactly. they're gone. And it's sad in the moment because you know why you're shooting it. But yeah. I can't not shoot it. And yeah. it was just, I don't know. It wasn't like anything, um, like, it wasn't something I planned. And so I feel, no. and I feel like that's the best. I know that's like a cliche. It's the best. Like when you aren't planning it, like something great happens. Mm -hmm. And I just got some really beautiful photos and had a breakdown in the process. But mm -hmm. Um, and it feels good. It felt it was a very it was a cathartic experience, yeah. definitely. So yeah. I'm just trying to shoot more when I'm just around my friends, when I'm walking around Rutgers, and just be more intentional with just the things I'm seeing rather than trying to create a narrative. I think I was starting to force it a little bit. If you have like like a love for the work, it will shine through. And if it's with your family, if it's on just some random project that you wanted to do, it's a horror. It, it's a horror sci-fi film. Yeah. But if you have that love, then as someone who is creative, as someone that's passionate, that's always going to shine through. And that will oh, shine yeah. through through your work that you actually care. And that's and that's the hard part. Because like, I think some people like talking about like the burnout. They just do it and like, oh, they're like, they're like, oh, it's not my best work. But you always got to find something. Always, always yeah. find something in that work, in that piece, in, in that photo to be like, okay. And let's do better next time. Let's do it like this next time yeah. and keep trying to improve yourself. I know. I that like when people walk in for crits and immediately you're like, oh, this is my best word. I don't like it. I don't like it. I hate that. I hate <laughs> it so much. You can't because then obviously I'm biased towards being like, oh, so it's not their best work. Mm -hmm. Just bring in something, even if it's not a lot, and yeah. just be like, I'm proud of this one. Yeah. Yeah. And be passionate about it. Yeah. At least it be like, I'm burnout. This is what I took. Mm -hmm. I hate when people come in and just like right off the bat are like prejudiced against their own work. Yeah. It like peeves me. I don't know. It's like one of my number one like yeah, pet peeve for grits. Because yeah. the whole time they're like, yeah, no, I know, I know, I know, I need to change it. I'm like, but this is what you made. <laughs> this That's is what great. you made though. Be proud of it, <laughs> and just like be honest with us about it. It yeah. just really puts me off. I don't know. <laughs> um, but do you have anything that that you want like to plug and tell the people about to that camera? Oh my god, yes. Hi guys. I feel like it was my side profile the whole time. But like, there's that camera too. <laughs> There's three. Okay. Um, uh, uh, my Instagram for my photography page is Emma Rose Photos with two S's. Uh, you can follow that. And I think there's going to be an undergraduate gallery show uh, in November, which I'll probably be in at Mason Gross. Uh, so pop out to that. Thank no. you guys for watching. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Conversations with Creatives is hosted by Andrew Alexander and Sam Finkel and produced by Marissa Aloya and Andrew Alexander. Conversations with Creatives is a production of Scarlet Media, a hands-on working and learning program for Rutgers undergraduates interested in digital media, filmmaking, and much more. Scarlet Media is part of the Division of Continuing Studies at Rutgers University and is associated with the Rutgers ITV Studio. Learn more about us at tvstudio.rutgers.edu.